This is AJ for One to Call, and in this video we're going to be getting sassy. No, explaining. explaining sassy. Oh right, yeah. Sassy is also known as Secure Access Service Edge. So, let's get right into it. Historically, most businesses will have some form of on-site physical security stack such as this firewall, as a security barrier between the internet and your business and employees. These could also often link together business locations, allow users to VPN into the office for file storage, server-hosted software, and so on, and also manage all of the security policies for your business to ensure that all of those connections to what your employees need the most stay secure. However, if this past few years has taught us anything, it's that our users are not always where your security equipment is. They could be working from home, working from public Wi-Fi at a local cafe, or they could be working from a remote location anywhere in the world. And with those remote users now using more cloud platforms than even only five years ago, how can you ensure that all of your users are managed and stay as secure as they would be if they were in the office? Historically, this would be by use of a VPN from remote offices or from remote user devices, back to the primary data center or head office, and also by expensive MPLS connections. However, with the increasing amount of users who have been working remotely, and also using cloud-based software, this can cause a bottleneck at the security stack that can actually harm the ability for your employees to work effectively. And it can also make it more difficult to manage those cloud-based softwares and database connections. Even five years ago, most of a business's data and software will have been stored or hosted from a business data center or centralized location with only a small amount of actual browsing traffic, meaning that all of your remote sites and remote users only ever needed to connect back to one centralized location to access all of the files and all of the software that they required. Now though, we are seeing a complete inversion of this where businesses now rely on their internet connection more than ever for cloud-based software services such as Microsoft 365, cloud storage such as OneDrive, SharePoint, and Dropbox, or Sage Cloud, Creative Cloud, or even Desktop as a Service, and a whole lot more besides. And now it feels like it makes much more sense to take a direct internet access approach for these cloud-based software services, rather than redirecting, slowing down, and bottlenecking the traffic at a centralized location, just to give your employees the enhanced security that you're security stack offers. However, a direct approach is not secure. Each of these cloud-based software services have their own security policies that are not managed by your organization. Meaning that whilst these are in many cases very good, they're also very inconsistent and could provide a potential security hole for your business. On top of this, recent studies have actually shown that approximately 70% of current security attacks on businesses are actually the result of remote users not being protected by your business network security policies. So, the biggest challenge is, how do you manage the security of all of these services, as well as all of your users and devices, regardless of where your employees are located, without hindering their ability to work, and also whilst ensuring that all of the company's security policies are adhered to? The best way to do this to increase speed and efficiency is right at the edge of those cloud platforms on the internet rather than being redirected to a centralized location. And this is where SASE comes in. SASE combines all of the services that you would usually associate with a physical security stack on your network, such as a firewall, SD1, DNS security, secure web gateway, cloud access security broker, and zero trust network access, but it provides all of these in a cloud hosted service. Meaning that regardless of where your employees are located or how they're connected, whether it's via personal home broadband, mobile data, public Wi-Fi, it doesn't really matter where, they will be connected to your SASE service via their nearest regional point of presence with multiple redundant failovers and then they will be protected by all of your security tools whilst having the best experience possible with the services that they use. The Cisco and Meraki SASE solution is built around four primary components, connect, control, converge, and observe. So let's take a look at these in more detail. Connect is the networking part of this solution. 
This allows users to be able to connect to the applications and data that they require using the Meraki ST1 solutions. This allows you to be able to connect sites and users from a single pane of glass and provide high quality of service that can be customized per user profile, depending on their requirements. Regardless of where they are, the user's devices is connected to the nearest cloud point of presence, or POP, which contains your cloud-hosted firewall, security policies, anti-malware, and more. This then applies all of your security policies to all web traffic to verify what services your users and their devices can access without them ever really noticing a difference. These same rules are also applied to inbound business data access, such as if a user does need to access files or software which is hosted on your internal business network. The remote user is verified at the nearest cloud edge pop to their location and their traffic is routed via your cloud hosted firewall back to your internal network. This of course is now a flip of how this would have been done historically, where a user would originally connect over VPN to your central business location to apply all of these security policies before routing traffic to the internet, which would then cause a bottleneck at that centralized location. Instead now, the users connect directly to the internet and your security policies are applied in the cloud where these users can be redirected into your network if and when they need. If your users are in the office, SASE's integration with SD-WAN means that your users' traffic is routed according to their needs. If they require direct web access to cloud applications and resources, the traffic is routed directly via your cloud firewall and security policies. If your user requires access to internal resources, such as server-hosted software, data, or files, then the user's data is routed via on-premises security policies that are also managed from that single pane of glass, which manages your complete business security. The control part of this solution gives you the ability to both control and protect your users. As we mentioned previously, with the growing use of direct internet or direct to cloud applications, Cisco Umbrella provides all of the tools to protect your users, no matter where they are and from the latest security threats. It allows you to protect all external access and all cloud edge directly at the source by using DNS, layer security, secure web gateway, cloud delivered firewall, and much more. Another core component of control is zero trust network access, which is provided by Cisco Duo, meaning that only verified users and devices can access the services, resources, and data that they've been granted access to, regardless of the location that they're accessing from, for the most optimized security of your information. Cisco is then able to converge all of the resources of Meraki, Umbrella, Duo, Thousand Eyes, and more into an integrated solution for optimized monitoring, high quality of service, and best-in-class security. By converging all of these services, Cisco is able to provide unique observability features. And observability within the Cisco SASE solution is the evolution of monitoring, allowing you to generate actionable insights on your security data. By combining all of these resources under one banner, it means that with Cisco Thousand Eyes, even though many of these cloud services are outside of your ownership or direct control, and that you do not know how their traffic is routed, you can still ensure the highest performance, security, and integrity of the data that is being accessed. The Cisco SASE solution is able to give you complete visibility from the users to the applications and the data that they access over any network, regardless of where they are. And it also gives you unique insights into any performance issues, allowing you to remedy incidents quickly and also maintain a reliable connection. That sounds like a win-win-win to us. So let's take a quick look at a demo of how all of the services under the Cisco SASE solution integrate. Where's my computer? Oh, here it is. Inside the Cisco Meraki dashboard, you are able to easily create a link with Cisco Umbrella to integrate Umbrella into your SD1 fabric. In the left menu in your Meraki dashboard, head to Organization and then this option called Cloud OnRamp. This is where we're able to deploy our connector with Cisco Umbrella. Simply click Deploy and give your network connector a name. In this example, we'll just call it SASE Connector and then select your data center pairing. In this demo environment, 
you can already see that we already have New York and Los Angeles set up in the Deployments tab, as you can see here. However, this would usually be set to the nearest regional data centres to where you are. So, if you're in the UK, you would choose London and Frankfurt, or if you're in the EU, you would choose Paris and Prague. This will then set up all of the necessary API connections to the relevant data centres you have selected, and then deploy your VMX on the umbrella data centres you have selected. Next, we have to build the site-to-site -site VPN from this Meraki network to these new connectors. Simply go to Security and SD1 in the left menu, and then Site-to-Site -site VPN. Once in here, we will need to state that our Meraki network is a spoke, and then we can select the hubs that we have connected and deployed within Cisco Umbrella. We select our primary connector first, in New York in this example, and then our secondary connector in Los Angeles. Of course, this could be London and Frankfurt, or Paris and Prague, respectively. What this means is that regardless of where a user is located, all traffic will go out to the internet to connect to our umbrella security policies to be analysed and inspected. So, let's take a look at the umbrella dashboard next. Simply log in, and the first thing that we need to do is check that the network tunnel has been correctly configured. In deployments, under core identities, click on network tunnels. Here you can see our umbrella connector is set up and established, and you can see the serial numbers linked to these VMXs. Now that we know that this is established, we can set up our security policies. In the left menu, navigate to policies, and then here you can set up DNS policies, firewall policies, web policies, data loss prevention policies, and much more. Let's take a look at the DNS policies as an example. You can see here that we've set up groups with their own DNS policies, and even SSL decryption through Cisco's intelligent proxy. In web policy, we can set up multiple different rules depending on what we would like people to be allowed to access. You can set up web policy rules with allowing access to sites or types of sites. However, with security enforcement, a warning, which will present a warning page that can be accepted by the user, these will also be logged so that you can see who has been accepting these warnings. You can also have a complete block of pages where users will be presented with a block message. Or you can set up browser isolation, where web pages would instead be loaded in an isolated web browser session that would then be displayed in the user's browser window. In this example, we've set up rules to stop people from downloading certain file types, such as ISO images, as well as protecting from malware and phishing attacks. Within here, we've also set up a few different types of drill-down rules, including a policy to warn people when accessing auction sites such as eBay, which could be considered as time-wasting. These can also be edited just by altering the categories in the rule. We've also set up a second drill-down policy to isolate sessions when accessing certain types of websites. In this case, We've set it up so that when people access news, sports, and other uncategorized websites, that it will load these sessions in an isolated web browsing window and send the session to the user's browser. This means that the web-hosted browser will be the one exposed to any threats rather than the local browser and the local machine. When a session is loaded in a hosted browser, it will appear the same as if the user to have loaded it themselves, apart from a small banner within the browser window such as this one here, to indicate that it is a hosted session. If we wanted to, we could set up a new drill down rule, where we can click Add Rule, name it, select the action that we would like to perform. In this case, we're going to set up a block rule. We add our identities, which in our case will be our umbrella network tunnels, which we've previously set up. And then we select our destination categories, in this case, we're going to be blocking access to gambling, pornography, and other similar websites. Now, if any of our users attempt to load any of these types of pages, they will be presented with a site access blocked message, such as this one here. We can also protect our users from people stealing particular data types, such as credit cards. First, we would need to create a data set in the data classification area of the dropdown and select details such as bank account and credit card numbers. Once this has been done, in the data loss prevention policy, we would be able to create a new rule. First of all, let's name it. 
give it a description and severity rating, and then choose our action. In this case, we would like to block access to this type of content. Again, we set our umbrella network tunnels, and then select our data classification we have just set up, and select it to scan all destinations. When this is saved, it will then scan all websites visited for the risk of stealing credit card and bank account information and block access from malicious sites from stealing this data. It will also be able to present a warning page for users so that they will be aware that their data has been protected from potential malicious activity. Administrators can then observe their entire network, including their remote users, for activity with regards to any of the rules which have been set up just by going to reporting in the left menu and then activity search. You can then filter this search by activity, such as blocked actions, warnings, isolated pages accessed, content categories, and a whole lot more. And these are just a few of the things that you can do. If your business uses any type of cloud applications or data solutions, such as Office 365, Google Cloud Services, Dropbox, Sage Cloud, Creative Cloud, and so on, and especially if you have a mix of on-site and remote users, who are not all protected by your business's security policies, then the services that we've discussed in this video would provide the perfect solution to manage that remote workforce, whilst also keeping them and your network secure. But don't just take it from us though, we can provide you with a free trial to set up on your own network, so that you can try out the Cisco SASE solution for yourself. We can even help you set it up, get it configured, show you how it works and how to manage it. And if it's not for you, then don't worry about it. We'll just pay for it to be returned for you. That's not the only thing that you don't have to worry about though. You also don't have to worry about upgrading your entire network to a SASE compatible solution all at once. It can be done in stages as and when equipment and services are due for renewal. And as you upgrade each of those parts of your network, we can work with you to integrate these into a SASE compatible solution. If you want to find out more about some of the individual elements of SASE, such as SD-WAN, Cloud Firewall, Zero Trust Network Access, DNS Security, or even single sign-on and multi-factor authentication, then stay tuned for future videos from us. If you found this information useful and hopefully easy to understand, then please give this video a like and also consider sharing it. Until next time though, see you soon.